Let's do it. Does everything audio. sound good? Can you hear me? I can hear you, and now I see you too. Hello. Excellent. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. I think there's uh, a little bit of a delay. Okay. But... So today, oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, so I just today I'm going to be talking there. about Fedora and Cosmic. So, uh, hello. Perfect. I was just going to make sure you're all set with a screen share. Is there I just a put delay? Your screen or... share there. there is a delay. I think it might be yes. on my end. I'm all set. But yeah. in that case, I'm going to go and hand no, over to you. You can take, take it away and give us an update on the Cosmic SIG. Over to you, Ryan. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Brew, and I'm going to be talking about Fedora and Cosmic today. So just a quick personal introduction. I recently graduated from college this May. Uh, I actually started using Linux only in the last October, so like six months ago. Um, give me just a sec. Oops. <laughs> um, slideshow. OK. Hopefully, we're good. Uh, so I only started using Linux six months ago, about a week before the release of Fedora 39. I really fell in love with the open source community. I have contributed to a lot of various projects that have interested me since then. Started out with the Godot engine, but now I'm doing a lot of Cosmic stuff. Uh, I tried out Cosmic pre-alpha and really loved it. So I started contributing to it, and then I fell in love with Rust as well. And I currently manage the Fedora Cosmic SIG. So. Um, I have kind of a uh, who, what, when, where, why, how about Cosmic. So I'm going to start with who is Cosmic. This is who develops Cosmic uh, System 76 primarily. They uh, develop Pop OS, which is another distro, and they've been working on the Cosmic desktop environment for about two years now, I think. Uh, external contributors, um, there's a lot of regulars I see, uh, including Joshua Megna, Eduardo Flores, um, Lev Kuchin, and myself. well. So Cosmic is getting pretty close to being fully translated for most languages. Uh, I'd also like to see a lot more third-party contributors join. There's uh, third-party app developers as well that uh, develop with their uh, with the library for that they make. Oh, I'm getting text. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, but uh, what is Cosmic? Uh, Cosmic is yet another desktop environment. Uh, it's developed by System76. It's built entirely in Rust using a modified version of the ICE uh, GUI toolkit. Um, and then they provide, OK, I'm getting a lot of tags. I want to make sure that, OK, now, now for real, I'm not going to look at those until the end. <laughs> I wanted to make sure people could hear me. So it's a. Uh, where were we? Cosmic provides a library on top of ICE called libcosmic, which it kind of has some custom widgets and custom theming. Uh, and uh, kind of because ICE is a lower level toolkit, uh, they kind of bring it up to the level of something like GTK. Um, and then I have a picture of Cosmic over on the right. I'm also using Cosmic right now. So uh, if we have any questions about it later, I can show you guys some things. Uh, when is Cosmic? I've really found out the answer to that question is when it's ready. Uh, there, there is a blog that provides monthly updates from System76, but uh, in general, um, they've said that uh, the alpha, they did say that the alpha would be in March, but then uh, after they expanded the scope of the alpha, they decided to move it to May. And then now I'm not entirely sure, but there is a backlog of bugs that they're working on fixing, and I think they're trying to close in now on the uh, feature set for the alpha. Um, where is Cosmic? So uh, the places you can find like uh, Cosmic things, the Pop! OS GitHub has all of the repositories for it. All of the projects are uh, you know, GPL 3.0 or MPL 2.0, which is pretty great because um, anyone can fork it at any time if they so choose. Um, the developer discussions uh, can be found at their Mattermost chat. Personally, I'd like to see them move to Matrix, but uh, of course, for now, they're on Mattermost. Uh, then there's a lot of downstream communities I've found for various distros. Um, there's a NixOS Cosmic Matrix chat. There's, of course, the Fedora Cosmic Matrix chat, which I'll talk about later. 
And then there's a lot of uh, packaging efforts going on for getting the Cosmic Desktop environment in different distros. I'm, of course, working on the one for Fedora, but there's Pop! OS, NixOS, and OpenSUSE as well. Why is Cosmic? So um, it's pretty important to justify why you're creating something new. I know in the previous discussion, they talked about why they're creating something new uh, when there's something like BitTorrent already out there. But for desktop environments, why why are we building Cosmic? So um, System76 decided that uh, GNOME, which was their core GNOME, I'm you know I'm still new to the Linux community. I'm not sure what how you pronounce it, <laughs> but uh, they uh, they were not really working out for their uh, distro anymore. So they decided to develop a desktop environment that was new. Uh, they want it to be something that's more modular. Um, they make a lot of components that can be plugged into by third-party components easier than current desktop environments. Uh, and they provide an API to build the components off of uh, the most notable one being Cosmic Applets, which are the things you see on the panel, like the app tray, workspaces view, stuff like that. Hmm. So it's uh, entirely Rust-based, which I'll say a lot in this presentation. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of a Rust shill, but uh, Rust programs in general are safer than their C and C++ counterparts. We've heard that a lot. And uh, the System76 developers are also huge fans of Rust. Um, for instance, uh, one of their employees makes Redox OS, which is a Unix-like microkernel operating system. Um, and they want to make use of modern protocols and standards. Um, so no X11, they're working on Wayland from the jump. Uh, older desktop environments have to deal with their X11 support in the ways that they choose. Um, so how is Cosmic? Um, uh, Cosmic is pretty good so far, I'd say. I mean, I'm using it in my personal, um, you know, day-to-day uh, -day use, but I wouldn't recommend it for production use just yet because they describe it as pre-alpha and it's definitely not up to what they hope for it to be. Uh, here's a little fun graph about uh, the way I've seen desktop environments in my six months of using Linux. I see it as largely desktop environments are, uh, are built around the toolkits that they're based on. So you see stuff like Gnome, Cinnamon, and Budgie, they're uh, GTK based and they're built in these languages that GTK supports. Uh, and then KDE and Elxcute, they're built on Qt, of course. Uh, and Cosmic is kind of the new kid on the block. They're using Iced, uh, which is just a Rust framework. So then you ask the question, why not GTK and why not GNOME? So System76 uses GNOME in their current iteration of Pop! OS, and GTK has Rust bindings, and GTK is more battle-tested than any Rust GUI framework currently available because that kind of space is still maturing. And GNOME is a really good desktop environment. So, you know, you kind of have to ask, why do you need to make a new desktop environment? Um, there's lots of labor required to start fresh and you would want to convince third parties to contribute. So you kind of need like a mission statement. Of course, uh, System76 can uh, provide explanation better than I, but uh, the way I see it, um, the reason why not GTK is uh, GTK is bindings, which provide less idiomatic experience for Rust devs. Uh, and I think they'd like to see the native Rust ecosystem grow even more. So Iced is you know, completely native Rust. It's not bindings to another language. It's completely memory safe and type safe and all of the safeties that we like with Rust. Uh, and I think they uh, probably their biggest external contribution is contributing to Iced. Uh, so of course, I think they want to see the uh, the Rust app ecosystem grow in that way. Um, they also build their uh, desktop environment on a lot of components that are built in Rust. Uh, Smithy, which is a, uh, a library kind of like WL Roots, but for uh, Rust compositors. Winit, which is like a window uh, initialization library. Uh, AshPD, which is a portals implementation, and quite a lot more. Uh, and of course, I linked a website. Rust likes their Are We Blank Yet? They have a uh, Are We GUI Yet? And it uh, shows all of these different frameworks and where they're at for Rust. Um, why not Why not GNOME? GNOME is a uh, 
very good desktop environment. And I actually used it for all of my time in Linux, uh, except for when I moved to Cosmic. So the reason why it didn't work out for System76 is that GNOME libraries are primarily developed for GNOME, uh, and they're not really intended for other desktop environments. They make a lot of libraries that work across desktops, but uh, a lot of the main integrated stuff is made just for GNOME. And it works really well in GNOME's case because everything is uh, very robust and solid on their end. And GNOME's customization offerings are limited to extensions, which are known to break between major versions. Uh, I know a lot of people who use Dash to Dock and complain about it, you know, different extensions breaking between major versions. And System76 wanted to improve on that by making a stable API that developers could build off of. And they were already making heavy customizations to GNOME anyway. Uh, should you be interested, even if you don't end up using Cosmic? Um, I think yes, because having other toolkits for app developers to use um, helps the Linux ecosystem altogether. Because if you have something that supports Linux well, um, app developers that are developing for other platforms will consider including Linux support just because their toolkit supports it. I also think that healthy competition is good for all desktop environments to grow. And it also brings another person to the, or another entity to the uh, discussion table for a lot of standards and protocols. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Cosmic's components and I'll get to Fedora right after that. <laughs> um, so the first component I wanted to highlight is their compositor. It's Wayland only, and it uses Smithy, which I mentioned earlier. It supports most, if not all the, uh, stable protocols and a lot of the uh, staging and unstable protocols are uh, pretty well supported and they're currently working on explicit sync support which i think is great of course um cosmic applets and cosmic panel they have configurable oops sorry they have configurable panels um as you can see on my desktop i have a uh, top panel up here uh applets are basically Self-contained programs, which uh, which run independent of uh, the panel itself, but it allows you to uh, you know customize the software a little more. And third parties can create applets as well. And basically, you can uh, rearrange them however you want. You can rearrange the panels however you want. You can have one or two panels. There's a lot of different configurations you can do. So uh, that's something that I found that's quite different from GNOME. But uh, KDE does uh, have the luxury of panel customization. So uh, I also uh, had a couple screenshots of different styles that you could do. Uh, you could do GNOME style if you like, uh, basically having only a top panel. You could do the Pop OS style if any of you are familiar with that. It has um, a dock at the bottom and a panel at the top. Uh, personally, for me, that's too much screen real estate being taken up. Um, Ubuntu style, which I'm trying out right now, just because after the screenshots, I decided I wanted to stick with this one for a bit. And then you can do a KDE style where the panel is at the bottom and it has the app tray there too. Uh, now we're gonna talk about LibCosmic, which is built on top of Iced. It's a UI and widget theme toolkit library. It, uh, I would say it's kind of comparable to GTK Iced is kind of lower level that provides basic uh, widgets, but Cos LibCosmic builds on top of that and makes everything have a consistent theme, which uh, everyone seems to really like. Um, and there's a lot of base apps uh, developed with LibCosmic for the Cosmic desktop environment. I have the text editor up in the top right corner and the file explorer in the bottom right. Uh, there's a lot of supplementary tools that also go into uh, building Cosmic, there's a, a display configuration tool, a screenshot tool, their implementation of portals, and then a lot of separate libraries uh, that can be used in other projects that aren't even related to Cosmic. So uh, Cosmic Text is one of those, um, and it's actually being used in uh, Zed, which is a new IDE that's being developed for Rust, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of third-party repos. I'm going to jump through this section real quick, but there's lots of applets. Uh, there's somebody has made a, a cosmic application template that can get you started on developing a uh, an application with Cosmic's libraries. Uh, 
uh, there's a repo with a project collection that people can contribute to if they have a, a cosmic project they want to showcase. So there's a good third party ecosystem being developed. All right. So finally, we're going to talk about Fedora. Um, so I've used Fedora my whole time on Linux. Uh, I, I did switch around to different distros for a while, but I do think Fedora is such a great experience and has such a great community that uh, overall it's the distro for me. Um, there's a lot of Fedora spins. So once I was looking into Cosmic, I was thinking, uh, how do we make a spin for Cosmic? So that's when I first decided to uh, figure out Fedora packaging. And that was kind of my end to Fedora packaging. So uh, this is my, <laughs> my long step-by-step -step list on how to get a, a, a Cosmic spin. So uh, the stuff that we've gotten up to is uh, we have one package approved and in Rawhide right now, which is uh, already really good progress. We have packages for basically everything else, um, but they still have to go through the approval process and that's currently being worked on. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of steps, but uh, thankfully we have a lot of them done. Uh, we've created a uh, special interest group for Cosmic. Um, we've made spec files for all of the Cosmic components. And uh, here's another screenshot of the Cosmic desktop running on Fedora. I personally use uh, Fedora Atomic desktops. So uh, I started out with Silver Blue and I ended up making a, a custom Atomic image for, for Fedora Cosmic. Um, what's left to do? Um, package reviews are still in progress. Um, I have a link here for the uh, bug report that has the meta list for all of the Cosmic packages. Um, once all the packages are in Rawhide, then I'm going to try to submit a change proposal to hopefully get a Fedora Cosmic spin. And I'm hoping that'll be for Fedora 41. But, uh, you know, if, if the uh, pace of development of Cosmic Stable doesn't pick up, we may have to move it to Fedora 42. But overall, I'm still committed to getting that in Fedora. Um, can you run Cosmic on Fedora today? Uh, if you haven't been paying attention, yes. Um, but you can't do it in the official repos yet. Uh, I do have a copper repository where all of the uh, packages are. They're built daily from Git snapshots. And uh, I just added another warning to not use this in production. Uh, there are bugs. Um, obviously, there's some, you know, there's some pretty game-breaking bugs if you, uh, you know, have a certain workflow. But my workflow works fine with Cosmic right now, uh, and I'm pretty confident that for most people it, it'll be working fine. But I'm still adding that warning. Uh, how will you run Fedora on Co or how will you run Cosmic on Fedora in the future? Um, obviously, once it becomes stable, it'll be recommended to use the official Fedora repos. Um, Currently, we just have one package approved, and that's the compositor. But uh, Rawhide's packages aren't being updated daily. Um, so still recommended to use the copper for now. Can you contribute to Fedora Cosmic? If any of this sounds interesting, yes. Uh, we're looking for contributors all the time. Uh, the Cosmic Matrix chat, which I'll put inside the, uh, the uh, release party matrix chat, is uh, open to anybody, not just contributors. and uh, the ways you can contribute, you can submit bug reports for Cosmic, and you can also submit uh, downstream bug reports if you do try the uh, copper out. And if you love Rust as much as I do, you can consider contributing to the uh, upstream. Um, the people there are really awesome, and uh, they'll help you get started. Um, if you're a package maintainer, then it'd be really helpful to have people maintaining the Cosmic packages in Rawhide. Currently, that'll be just me unless uh, we have more people step up. And then uh, spreading the word about Fedora Cosmic and participating in the community is always, always welcome. All right, uh, special thanks. Uh, these people have really helped me out throughout um, my entire journey in Linux and Cosmic, especially. Uh, Neil Gompa, he's really everywhere. Uh, he advised me through the entire process of creating a Fedora special interest group. He sponsored me as a package maintainer, and he's been working on reviewing the packages now. Uh, Fabio Valentini. He's the uh, Rust SIG maintainer. He's really great and uh, underappreciated. He works tirelessly on maintaining a lot of Rust crates for Fedora. And uh, he also has answered a lot of my questions regarding 
uh, Rust to RPM, which he maintains. Uh, Joseph uh, Gayoso, which I think that's how you say it, but you can correct me later. He's uh, He does marketing for Fedora, and he's just super passionate about everything Linux, and he's awesome. He's been awesome about uh, getting the uh, word out about Fedora Cosmic. I'd like to thank all of System76. Um, all of their employees are really awesome, and they're really wonderful to work with upstream. And they uh, also help out with problems downstream as well, which uh, not all upstreams do. Um, and then I'd like to thank the Cosmic community and, of course, everyone who made Fedora 40 possible because it truly is a great distribution and everyone did a wonderful job uh, putting it together. All right. I don't know if I have time for questions. I uh, I may have gone over. Not sure. Um, looks you like I have done on, a decent job. On time. And we do have, since we have a break after this session, uh, we do have some time to go over because actually the Q&A is overflowing. Uh, you have nine questions here. So I, I can, I'm, I've right. got the thread open so I can help out with uh, uh, bringing them to the front. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide the screen share so that way it's just you and me up here so okay uh, i do not see them so ranking well i just have to look people. through the matrix for the questions or i've got them here for you i'll go through them with you oh. the first question right, thank you. We'll, we'll go 10 minutes we'll see how far we can get in 10 minutes so the first question here all right sounds um, and good. Also, folks, yeah if folks can uh if you look in the thread you can upvote your favorite questions and i'll use that as a way to prioritize what questions we go through otherwise i'm going to go through these sequentially so the first question is, what inspired you to bring Cosmic to Fedora and launch a SIG in the Fedora community? All right, uh, good question. Um, so honestly, uh, once I started looking at uh, Cosmic, I was kind of like, this is another desktop environment. It doesn't seem that interesting. And uh, to be honest, I think the thing that got me passionate about it was uh, I tried it. There was a uh, Fedora atomic image that one of the employees had made that was kind of uh, a test image. And it wasn't working at first. And I had to, it was three months old. So I had to go fix it. Once I did, I tried it. And I was like, there are some things that uh, I I would like to fix about this desktop environment. Uh, some There were some things not implemented yet. And I felt like it could become something that I would really enjoy. And uh, I think a lot of open source contribution is like, if you find something that uh, you use or you want to use that frustrates you, you go in and fix it uh, if you have the know-how. And uh, since I was using Fedora at the time, I was like, I, I really need to combine these things. You know, I, I want to uh, see Cosmic on Fedora. And I feel like uh, if someone's, if I don't want to wait around seeing if someone's going to do it, I'd rather try and do it myself. And it's been a really good process to get involved with Fedora. And uh, the the process has been pretty nice getting a SIG together. Um, does that answer the question well? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It was actually, that one was my question. Uh, but you are definitely getting nice. a lot of love in the chat from, from our Fedora community. That's um, great, yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, I'm looking at... There's been a few upvotes here, and it looks like the most upvoted one is question number seven. Uh, is there any kind of support you would like to have from non-engineering parts of Fedora, like marketing, design, documentation, or anything else? Yeah, so uh, we could use, um, we've gotten a lot of support for marketing. I feel like uh, it's been great having uh, Joseph get the word out a little bit. Uh, for documentation and stuff like that, that's always helpful. Uh, if you find any problems with um, the current packaging, or if you, uh, you know, if you want to document certain behavior for Cosmic on Fedora, then that would be helpful. Uh, I know that you know a lot of other desktop environments are very well documented on Fedora, and this is kind of new territory. So basically, if anybody has any expertise doing something for another desktop environment, that would be helpful here as well. I imagine. But yeah, uh, joining in the matrix chat, uh, I'll put the matrix chat in uh, in here real quick. Um, if you uh, if you just have any sort of expertise and are wondering how uh, you can help out, then you know we'd be happy to uh, see where you fit in. 
awesome. Our next most upvoted question. There's still some more and more votes coming in. Looks like question number six. Are there any issues with using apps made for Cosmic on other desktop environments? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, the funniest issue I had for a while, which has been fixed since then because everything's rapidly changing, is I was trying, uh, I think it was their file manager on uh, KDE. And uh, for a while, they didn't have minimized support implemented in their toolkit. So uh, they just, you just weren't able to minimize the window at all. But uh, I think uh, having tried out a couple of Cosmic apps, um, they actually work generally like you'd expect from most apps. Um, I haven't noticed any, uh, you know, game breaking issues for LibCosmic specifically on other platforms. And I think you can try out a couple of uh, Cosmic apps. I know on a flat hub, there's, um, I don't know if it's, it's probably flathub.org, now that I think about it. Um, there's a, uh, the first Cosmic app I could find on Flathub was uh, Cosmic Web Apps um, by 11HSoft. Uh, the toolkit is still maturing, but uh, everything is pretty simplistic when it comes to the theme. Uh, this allows you to create um, desktop entries, I'm pretty sure, for, uh, for web apps. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not sure if that's what it does, but I think that's what it does. Nice. So yeah, if you want to try out a, a Cosmic app, then that's a third party one, but you can try it out on Flathub. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, looks like then we've got a few that are actually upvoted to four. So let's go with question nine, which is uh, from Jcas. How does Cosmic handle using GNOME apps like Fractal visually? That's a good question. Um, whenever I had Fractal, I switched back to Element, but uh, Fractal was actually pretty well. It worked pretty well on uh, Cosmic. Um, I switched back to Matrix only because Fractal was missing a couple features that I needed, but uh, GNOME apps work pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any installed uh, as far as I know, but uh, GTK apps work good. GNOME apps work good. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, disk usage. In, I bet logs is a, is a GNOME app. Um, yeah, so it works like you'd expect. There is an icon missing. I'm pretty sure that's Cosmic's icon theme is probably messing that up. Um, but other than that, it looks like everything works fine with logs. So there's one. <laughs> I think most uh, GNOME apps will just work fine. Is it is it GNOME or GNOME? How do you say it? <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, I say GNOME. Yeah, I'm putting it on the spot here. But it is. Uh, I, I saw it earlier in the chat. This is a this is one of those like uh, could be like a Linux holy war kind of topic. Very yeah. <laughs> GNOME or, or GNOME. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've heard so. different YouTubers say either way. It's like I don't know. There is an answer, and I feel like I should know because someone from GNOME told me once. I don't know if I'm even saying it. Right. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've like got probably time angrily be like, time. Uh, no. Yeah. So we've got time Sorry. for about four more four more minutes. Yeah, there, there's a weird delay that's happening here, and I think it's on my end. Um, but we have about yeah. four more minutes for I think I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely something for me, feedback for next time. Um, but here's another mm -hmm. one that looks like a good one. Uh, at this point, I think we're all at kind of the three upvotes or, or less. Um, is there an easy way to try and play around with Cosmic on a Fedora base at the moment? Yes. Um, so the uh, copper, of course, um, I, I maintained a Cosmic. Dang it out in a VM has had a, uh, oh, did I lose connection? Hello. It's telling me that I lost connection. It <laughs> It did stutter there for a minute. Maybe if you start over. OK. Um, so uh, if you wanted to try it in like a VM, I've, there's been mixed results because uh, Cosmic Comp doesn't currently support software rendering. That's on the that's slated for Alpha 2. Um, but if you wanted to try it on bare metal, or if you have like a, a uh, 
hardware acceleration in a VM, you can try it through the uh, copper. If you wanted to try it through uh, atomic, uh, an atomic desktop, uh, Universal Blue actually has a, uh, a cosmic image that I actually originated and I moved it over to Universal Blue after the, uh, the guys over there um, reached out to me. Uh, they're great people and I'm sure, I think they have a presentation as well, so go see that. Um, but yeah, you can rebase to uh, Cosmic. Um, they have regular Cosmic. They have Cosmic with uh, GNOME installed and Cosmic with uh, with KDE installed. So uh, if you need a fallback desktop environment, if you're not entirely ready to switch over, then I recommend getting one with the uh, GNOME or KDE as a fallback. But yeah, if you go to the copper as well, uh, it's the instructions are there, so I can put this copper in the matrix chat as well. Um, the uh, instructions are right here, depending on whether you use atomic or not. But yeah, and report bugs upstream and downstream. Excellent. So we have time for one, probably one last question before we go to our break. And I am, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to choose a moderator's favorite question, uh, which is okay. one I from David. And I think it's actually a really good question. Do you have a Cosmic working group to help you with the packages that support Cosmic? That would be wonderful. So I, I'm still learning about the intricacies of Fedora's management and all that. So I think uh, I didn't even realize that we could make a working group, but I, I will definitely be looking into that and I'll probably ask Neil about it because he's, he's kind of been my contact for everything Fedora related because he's been around and he knows a lot about it, but it'd be nice, uh, to have some help maintaining the packages once they become stable, uh, and even before then as well. Uh, so yeah. Excellent. Well, you definitely have gotten quite a bit of excitement here in the chat today with this presentation. So I think I'm you're glad, on the right yeah. path to getting some more visibility and interest around Cosmic on Fedora. Yeah. All right. Well, we are about five minutes past the scheduled time. So I think we will go ahead and wrap up here before we go to our break. Thank you so much, Ryan, for coming up on the main stage and sharing about Cosmic with the Fedora community. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. All right, bye. See ya.